Good morning, brethren. Let's take two for this video. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me word for word, verse by verse, and also read along with me, because the mouth will go quicker than the brain, okay? Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. just want to share something with you, uh, something that just is kind of a fascination to me. We are admonished here in Scripture to be careful about vowing things, swearing things and oaths and stuff like that but particularly vows hmm. we are admonished we as saints are told and we're going to look at this are admonished uh, you know you probably shouldn't vow things you shouldn't do that we are admonished not to do that but what is a thing of fascination to me is how the enemies will vow to Satan to carry out his dirty work and whatnot, and they will vow unto men and whatnot, and so on and so forth. But we are admonished not to vow. Hmm. And if we do vow, if we do, make sure we pay it. Make sure we do what we say we're going to do. Because if not... Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 7. Keep thy foot, now remember, rightly dividing the word of truth, different dispensation, okay? Today, God does not dwell in temples made by hands, okay? Don't go to church buildings, or excuse me, don't go to phallus houses, Okay? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Why? Because the fool says in his heart there is no God. Be not rash with your mouth, Brad. Put your name right there. Put your name right there. Take, take your little pen or your pencil or whatever. Brad? <laughs> okay. Be not rash with thy mouth. Brad, your name? <laughs> and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Yeah, and someone who trusts in his heart is what? A fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Okay? I shared this, uh, this what, I'm, what we're talking about, with a beloved brother. And um, praise the Lord. Um, he shared a bit of testimony about how the Lord used him, as the Lord often does. And it's like, wow, man, that, that was sweet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. That's beautiful. But, be not rash with thy mouth, Brad, <laughs> and let not thine heart be hasty in anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Like, you know, these people who we've all had that guy that we've known or that woman that we've known who's like, I swear to God. I swear to God. It's funny when they always say that when they're trying to cover up a lie or something like that. It's just disgusting. It's like, don't. Just don't. Okay? Anyway. Be not rash with thy mouth. Let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice 
is known by multitude of words. Hmm. And also it says in the scriptures, there, uh, and many words, their light wanteth not sin. I just bradized that. Here the context is fool. That's the key to this. Fool. Okay? For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Hmm. And remember, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Hmm. Have you ever seen or watched or heard some of these atheists trying to explain, like, how everything got here? And when you and I, uh, as saints, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. There! It's simple! Right there! Okay? There! There, there you go! In the beginning, God! Created the heaven and the earth. Okay? There you go. But then you got these uh, atheistic twits out there, you know, good example. Coming up with all this nonsense about how all this got here. Okay? Just, just an example. When thou vowest to vow unto God, Prefer not to pay it. And people could be, well, I can vow something to a person and then, you know, spirit's own body and then I won't get in trouble. Um, let your yea be yea and your nay nay. Words have meaning. Words are important. And if your word means nothing, good luck. <clears throat> when thou vowest a vow unto God, prefer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. I have vowed before to my wife. I have vowed to never touch a cigarette again. <laughs> you know, just, just an example. Okay? Just an example. All right? Make sure you do it. Okay? Why? Because he hath no pleasure in fools. See, if you don't do what you say you're going to do, then you're likened unto a fool who says in his heart there is no God because you are the one who decided, well, I'm not going to honor my end of it. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't it be horrifying if God was like that? Praise the Lord, his ways are not our ways. Now, let's continue. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Mm. Mm. So see, it's better not to vow than that thou should vow and not pay. Doesn't necessarily say don't vow, but the admonition is we're fallible. And sometimes we will say things we don't mean. And when you and see what the Lord thinks of these things, it's very serious. God takes those things extraordinarily serious. You know, words, <laughs> words are important to the Lord. Very important. Okay? That's why he's preserved it here in the authorized version. Okay? And God, God takes words very seriously. Very seriously. Okay? <laughs> very. So, like I said, you're likened onto a fool if you vow that you're going to do something and you don't do it. So, better because we're all fallible men. We make mistakes even and can break a vow with not even thinking about it. See, the Lord takes these things extraordinarily serious. But see, Satan through, you know, so many things have made it light. Look at, look at the divorce rate thing. A disposable society when it comes to marriage. It's like a, a razor, a disposable. Okay. Words 
have been polluted. And man's word as keeping his word. There are people out there who are men of the word. And women of the word. Yes, there are. They're very far and few between. Very far and few between. Yes. Yes. But see, when it comes to the Lord, okay, if you're going to be... If you're going to be foolish enough to vow something unto the Lord that you have no intention of ever keeping, or if you're if you try to no, 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 vow unto the Lord, okay. When thou vowest to vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for He hath no pleasure in fools. You vow something unto the Lord, you do it. And if you don't, he likens you unto someone who says in his heart there is no God. See, it shows that you think very little of the one that you have vowed unto. You have exalted yourself above the individual who is God that you are vowing unto. You see how that works? So when you got some nitwit saying, oh, I swear God. Dude, shut up. Just shut up. Don't say that. You're going to give account for that. Because God takes these things very seriously. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow, than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth. Oh, James 3, anybody. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Think about Herod. When he vowed or swore unto the, the, the lady or the girl who was dancing in front of him. And he's like, I'll give you half the kingdom. And what does she do? Give me John the Baptist's head and charge her. He's like, ugh. But what happened? Okay. For his oath's sake, it says. He went and had John beheaded. Okay? All right? Keep that in mind. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Oopsie! <laughs> wherefore should God, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hand? For in the multitude of dreams, there's that thing again, and many words there are also divers vanities, but fear thou God. Now there is something to take into consideration here. There is. The dispensational difference. Okay? The dispensational difference. This was written under the law. Under the law, eternal security was not there. <laughs> Once saved, always saved, was not under the law. Period. And don't believe anyone if they tell you it was. It wasn't. Nor was it by grace through faith under the law. Don't believe that lie either. Okay? Under the law. Okay? Under the law, there was no eternal security. You were not once saved, always saved under the law. You could lose salvation under the law. Yes, you could. Okay? And under the law, under the law, salvifically, the penalty for this was a little bit more grievous. Today, if you are foolish and you vow to the Lord, there will not be a salvific penalty, but the penalties that will incur other than are quite drastic. Okay? Just because something isn't going to cost you your salvation doesn't mean that that's something that you should necessarily because it won't 
cost you your salvation. That's how the sleazy believists get away with all kind of devilment. Because they go to, well, it's not going to cost you your salvation. Well, if you're genuinely saved, no, it's not. You're right. You're right. But see, the way you serve the Lord reflects him. And when you have vowed something onto the Lord and you just willy-nilly decide, mm -hmm. is it going to cost you anything self-ethically? Today, absolutely not. No. But it will cost you other things. Because what does it say there? What does it say there? Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither, uh, neither, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Oopsie. Okay? Dispensationally, there's a difference there. Because under the law, there was no eternal security. Once saved, always saved wasn't there. So under the law, this was had a little different aspect to it. Whereas today, you come to the Lord and he saves you. You're once saved, always saved. Okay? Eternally secure. You can't lose what's not yours. That's how that works. Okay? Well, like I said... See, the sleazy believest and many other of these Christians will go off of the premise, well, it's not going to cost you your salvation. Well, scripturally speaking, no. <coughs> that is true on certain things. You know, you know. There, you, you can't lose what's not yours to lose, okay? You can't. But that doesn't mean just because it won't cost you salvation, that doesn't mean that you should go ahead and do it, Okay? It's a little common sense there, all right? All right? But there is a dispensational difference that should be noted. Nonetheless, nonetheless, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 on to verse 7. Uh, verse 30, <laughs> 33 on to verse 37, okay? Sermon on the Mount. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Rich in instruction and righteousness. Doctrinally, salvifically, it does not apply for us today. Okay? We have covered that before, and if I can remember, it'll be in the, the uh, description box for you, a link for the, you know, where we talk about the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? But here we see this again, and you got to remember, Christ in the Sermon on the Mount, was offering the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign, onto the Hebraic Jews while under the law. Okay? Never forget that. Never forget that. that I promise you that will help you out when you're dealing with these Christians. Trust me. Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 on the, uh, 33 on to verse 37. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Just kind of looked at it, didn't we, guys? But I say unto you, swear not at all. Man is fallible. God is infallible. Man can't do anything right. Man is inept. Man cannot keep God's perfect requirements. Okay? So, but I say unto you, <laughs> swear not at all. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth. For it is his footstool. Check your reference, um, your margin there. There's got to be one for Isaiah chapter 66, somewhere in there. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Talking about himself. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head. I've actually encountered, I swear in my mother's eyes. Ooh, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> Neither shalt thou swear by thy head. And this one, I've, I've dealt with this because thou canst not make one hair white or black. 
I've run into some people. It's like, well, yeah, you can. You can dye your hair and you can even dye the roots. Uh, no, God is the one who designed the hair of mankind. Okay, you can color it, but what happens? It grows out. You cannot permanently affix the color of your hair. You want to permanently affix the color of your hair? Wait a while. It'll go white. Okay. But let your communication be yay, yay, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So right there, for our instruction in righteousness, absolutely. Again, we are seeing the Lord's like, <laughs> don't swear at all. Okay? And, you know, why? Because man is fallible. Man is fallible. Okay? That's why. Let me remind you. Excuse me. Let me, let the scripture remind you. Okay? Romans chapter 7. Okay? Paul, the greatest of saints of the church of God. Paul, Romans 7, verses 15, on to verse 23. Here's the problem. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate... That do I. Yeah. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. You want to do the right thing? But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet. You know the Ten Commandments? God's perfect requirements. Paul couldn't keep them. Hey, Catholic. Peter couldn't keep them either. Only one man ever did. He just happened to be God, the Father. Okay? Different story. But, okay? Paul didn't want to sin. He wanted not to sin. Okay? His heart was right with God. Okay? He wanted not to sin. He wanted to abstain from all appearance of evil. But how to perform, how to do that? Go hide yourself in a cave if you want to. But even in a cave, when you're left alone, even the thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? Okay? You understand? Good. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. What does this have to do with vows, Brad? If you vow something to the Lord and you don't fulfill it, you're going to be in trouble. If you're a saint, no. It will not cost you your salvation because it's not your salvation. Okay? But it's a lot. There's a whole lot of other things that could happen. Health, uh, provision, grace, mercy, kindness, all kinds of other things. Okay? Remember, that, that's the jumping point that the devils will go off of to get you to sin. Well, it's not going to cost you your salvation. Just do it. Oh, so, oh, that's the way I can justify watching porn. That's the way I can justify playing video games. And you can just go on and on and on with that. Okay? 
<clears throat> now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Uh -huh. Yeah. Again, these people who come around with you gotta stop sinning. Just, just the, the, throw your pop on them if you drink that stuff, or just, just like get out of here, dude. Paul missed the memo. Okay, just, just go away, go away, lying devil. Okay. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You know that, you know, Peter talks about the hidden man in the heart, who as far as with the ladies and whatnot, but the inward man, who's the inward man? Who's the inward man for a saint? Oh, that'd be the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. God, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. We, we got to finish it. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And people have tried to twist that and say, well, Paul's just uh, making excuses to sin. With that, Shut up. No, he's not. Uh, I will remember this. The Romans 7 expository video will be in the description box for you to go over, okay? We looked at that specifically because as touching to what our Lord said back in Matthew chapter 5, verse 34, but I swear unto you, swear not at all. Okay? Because if you swear to God, if you make a vow to God, and you don't keep it, okay? It's not going to go well for you. You can't, you can't lose what's not yours to lose. Okay? You can't. You're once saved, always saved. If you came to the Lord according to his way. Okay? You boot the door, genius, genius, out of the way and climb up some other way. You're a thief and a robber. Okay? What we're talking about doesn't apply to you. I mean, it will because you're going to give an account anyway. But what we're talking about, okay, you're a saint and you make a vow and you foolishly don't keep it. You, you're, it's not going to cost you your salvation. No, it's not. No, it's not. But, oh, wow, you can lose your health, you can lose fellowship with the Lord, you can lose all kinds of other things. And like I said, the devils, that's their jumping off point. Oh, well, it's not going to cost you your salvation. And yet they're, they're preaching another Jesus, another gospel, to people who aren't saved anyway. Really kind of, you know, giving them more rope to hang themselves, you know? Okay? All right? Point is, man is fallible. Paul, the greatest of the saints of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, he couldn't be sinless. Like I said, you, you run into those twits, it's like the sinless perfection. Just, 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 you know, get, get out of here, man. I fart in your direction. I mean, seriously. I know that's a little vulgar, excuse me, but it's like, yo, know, it's just like, dude, just shut up. Get away from me. You know, just, you know, spit on your shoe or something. Okay? Man is fallible. And in our fallibility, we try to do something that has an infallible context because the Lord takes these things extraordinarily serious. And we mess it up. It's just, it's not going to go well for you. It's not. It's not. Okay? But now here's the real fascinating thing. Our enemies, like Jesuits, they make a vow. They make a vow. 
to Mother Church, to Arturo Sosa, to Satan himself. They make a vow. And what's very fascinating to me, our Lord, and we just saw even Paul, it's like, okay, and Paul, yes, you can bring up, well, Paul had a vow. Yes, he did. And he vowed things that he kept. And he, like, shaved his head and whatnot. We have a, there's a video somewhere on the channel talking about that. But, uh, yes, Paul had a vow. You read about that in Acts chapter 8. Uh, I think it's 8. No, it's not chapter uh, 8. Excuse me. It's not chapter 8. Excuse me. It's not. Excuse me. Excuse me. But, um, yes, you read about that. But see, the point is, whatever Paul's vow was, he obviously kept it, or uh, it might have been the vow of the Nazarene or Nazarite, whatever, excuse me, excuse me, okay. But besides the point, don't vow. It's better that you don't. And if you do, you better mind your P's and Q's. But see, our Lord, for our own benefit, Tells us, don't do that. Don't do that. Because if you vow to me and you break it, I'm not going to be too happy with you. And I'm going to probably take something away from you. Or do something. Okay? But when it comes to the enemy, look at Jeremiah chapter 44. Check this out. Check this out. <laughs> Jeremiah. Jeremiah 44. I love the book. Jeremiah is my favorite book in Scripture. It is my absolute favoritest book in all of Scripture. I love Jeremiah. I love Scripture. I love the Lord. But Jeremiah is my favorite book out of Scripture, obviously. Okay? Jeremiah 44, verses 24 on to verse 27. Now, backstory, most of you saints know this. Backstory is... Okay, Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of him. Nebuchadnezzar left in charge Gedaliah, and Ishmael came along and killed Gedaliah, and they ran him off. And uh, Johanan and all the proud guys, they went to Jeremiah. It's like, hey, go to the Lord for us so we can find out what the Lord wants us to do. And no matter what you tell us, no matter what the Lord wants us to do, whether it be good or whether it be, it be evil, we're going to do it. And guess what? They didn't do it. They wanted to go to Egypt. And they thought they believed in their heart, <laughs> trying to use their projection or whatever, that God would be in line with their desires. But the truth was, God admonished them. Go ye not into Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. Very simple. But what happened is, Jeremiah said, okay, the Lord said, don't go to Egypt. But you dissembled in your hearts when you came and asked me to go to the Lord. Because you already had your mind up anyway. You just wanted to hope or hoping that the Lord would go along with what you want. And they say, the Lord hasn't sent you to tell us not to go into Egypt, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, or yeah, Baruch, what do they say? Uh, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, set it on against us. And they go to Egypt. Very telling. You see, you see a lot of that going on today. It's like, here's, here's the truth. I don't want to believe it. I want to be my own God. Okay, have fun storming the castle. Okay. Here's the interesting thing. Now, these people who have been warned, who have been admonished, they wouldn't do anything for the Lord. They, they wouldn't come to the true God. But when it comes to themselves and doing what they want to do, like offering cakes onto the Queen of Heaven, something that gratifies them, Jeremiah 44, verses 24 and verse 27. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord, uh, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, 
we shall, we will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will, ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Now stop! The vows that they would make to the Lord, they would willingly, knowingly break. But when it came to this particular thing, thus saith the Lord, even the Lord said, uh, you will perform your vows that you've made unto, this is the Roman Catholic Mary that, that's being talked about. Okay, The Roman Catholic Mary is right here, the Queen of Heaven. Okay, this Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah 44, Catholic, here's, this is your Mary that you worship. Okay, this is your Mary. All right? Deal with it. Okay? This is your Mary. But God himself says that these people were for surely, look at that, ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Whereas the ones that they would vow unto him, they wouldn't. Now hold on and think about that. Let that roll around for a little bit. Hmm? Why is it so hard to do what God wants you to do? Hmm? Oh, it's easy. It's easy, huh? It's easy. You know, the longer I walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. Oh, but it's easy. One of the things we as saints have to watch out for is becoming too familiar to where it becomes secondhand or old hat, as it were. We got to watch out for that. You know, and this is something also to note when reading scripture, because you can get to a point where scripture will be just a mechanical process. And there's no life. There's no meat. There's no milk. It's just a mechanical thing. It's like, personally, Every time I read the scriptures, I want to see them with fresh eyes. I do. I do. I really do. And I ask for that. You know? Give me eyes to see. Ears to hear. Lord, you know? You got to watch out for that. Why is it so hard? Because... It's the thing of spirit and flesh. And the flesh warth against the spirit. And that's a capital S spirit too that I'm referring to. Okay? See, Paul, he admitted that when I would do good, there is evil present in me. And then you read Romans chapter 8, where is sin? It's here. In my flesh. Okay? So, to do the right thing according to the Lord. Why is it so hard? But yet, when it comes to doing the things contrary to the Lord, You'll pay your vows. You'll surely pay your vows, won't you? Hmm. Isn't that fascinating to you? Therefore hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah, that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord liveth. 
Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are, and all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Now, when you compare these two, Ecclesiastes 5, 1 on to verse 7, and also Jeremiah here, you'll notice that the vows are two totally different things. In and of themselves, they are vows, yes. But see, in Ecclesiastes, and it is as in Matthew, where the admonition is, you, you better be careful, where the Lord's like, D -d -d just don't do it! Don't do it! Okay? Just don't do it! If you do, you better mind your P's and Q's. You better mind your P's and Q's. Because if you're a saint, you can't lose what's not, it's, you can't lose what's not yours. Talking about salvation. It's not my salvation. It's not my salvation. It isn't. It's the Lord. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, God, my Father. He is our salvation. Okay? He is the redemption of the purchase possession. He is. Okay? All right? It's not mine. When it is yours, you got a big problem, buddy. But there again, just because something will not cost you salvation, that doesn't mean that you should run off and do it. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Yes, all things are lawful for you. Yes, you can do the same thing that they can do. Yeah, but you will pay a price for it. You will pay a price for it. And it's, it's like I said, it's just so fascinating to me that these people that's being taught, you know, these guys, especially here in Jeremiah, man, they got the snot whipped out of them. Okay, and then they go to they go to Jeremiah, and Jeremiah it's like, don't don't go to Egypt, and they're like, we're going to Egypt. And it's like, ah, what is it with these people? What is it with these people, man? But the thing that, like I said, that really kind of just like, wow, man. We know that if you vow, we've seen. If you vow and not pay, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. And say when a Jesuit makes a vow, number one, they're lost. Number two, they're vowing to Satan. So they're getting like a double whammy. They're not vowing to the Lord or whatnot. They're not, no, but they're vowing to Satan. And with that, they will perform their vows. The certainty of verse 25 here that our Lord says to these people. Again, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hand, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed. Yeah. To burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings onto her, the modern Roman Catholic Mary. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows unto false gods, other gods. Something that is contrary. Your eyes will be open and ye shall be as gods. They determine what is right. They are their own God. See. And when you go to Psalm 102, just one verse, just one verse, Psalm 102, verse 8. I said I shared this with a beloved brother. Um, 102, Brad. <laughs> 102, verse 8. My enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad and sane against me are sworn against me. Mm. Mm. 
When the Lord saves you, he seals you with himself. Hence, you are once saved, always saved. But there is a specific way that the Lord requires us for today to go to him that he may give you this gift of salvation. You just don't willy-nilly boot the door out of the way and climb up some any way that you choose. It doesn't work that way. Okay? And one too many Christ Chin out there has tried to convince you that it is thus. But our enemies, I like that. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. Like Jesuit coadjutors, devils, and what have you. And they that are mad against me are sworn against me. Also to put this into this put this into the equation, our enemies are very vigilant, are very diligent. They will stay up all night on their computers to harass people <laughs> and uh, send them links to stupid stuff, okay, and pretend to be other people and stuff like that. They'll do that all night because they're sworn against us. Hmm. And interesting, today is the 6th. Today is the 6th, isn't it? Proverbs 6, verses 12, on to verse 19. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Hmm. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. If thy feet offend thee, cut one of them off. Hmm. Fingers. If your hand offend thee, cut it off. Hmm. Hmm, very interesting, huh? So a naughty person, a wicked man, what is he putting before his eyes? Hmm? Where is his feet going? Where is he going? Hmm? What leads him? What is his hands touching? Hmm. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Uh, there's an infil a Jesuit infiltrator, at least coadjutor, that I know of who used to be pretty good at that. Used to be. Used to be. Because uh, now a lot of people are aware of the uh, putts. <laughs> but um, anyway, so he's kind of lost his luster a little bit. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. And these are people that are sworn to? Hmm? Think about that. Why wow, frowardness is in their mouth. Could a froward mouth make a vow? Swear? Hmm. Think about that. Roll that around in the head for a little while. Okay? Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Mm. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Like it says in Romans, they are creators, 
inventors of evil things. Mm. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running to mischief. Huh? Huh? Okay, look at that. <clears throat> he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Hmm. A proud look. You know, they call it a vanity mirror. You've heard of that. Vanity mirror, right? Look at yourself in the mirror. Well, okay, you shave your face, man, or you shave your head. Yeah, you got to do that, okay? Don't make it a habit to look in the mirror. You know, it's like, ah! You know, it's bad enough I got to look at myself doing this, okay? Think about that. Wink it with his eyes. Hmm? Proud look. Hmm. A lying tongue. There's those hands. And what's on hands usually? Digits, fingers, okay? Hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. Mm. Mm. Very fascinating. It fascinates me that there is such a, such a, what's the word I'm looking for? An enthusiasm on the part of our enemies to serve Satan that unfortunately in some of even the saints is lacking. I, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. There are times when the enemies make us saints look bad in the fact of their activity. Okay? Now, granted, our activity is guided by the Lord. How many of us know that the Lord has called us to do something and you know, it's like, hey, I opened that door for you. Why didn't you go through it? Or something like that. And we just haven't done it. Okay? But yet these guys, for Satan, it fascinates me. You know what else it does? It angers me. Because when I think about that, when I actually roll those thoughts in my head about that whole thing, about, you know, the, the enemies are outworking us, okay? And remember, we are called on to good works, not for salvation, okay? The work that we do, you know, uh, the three parts of witnessing, yes, okay, and stuff like that. But I, 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 I get that. I, I get angry when I think about that sometimes. It's like, you know, if, if these devils, if one of these devils actually got saved and had that kind of zeal for the Lord as they do for Satan, wow, man, wow. This is not the case for all brethren. No, it isn't. It's that dear young brother of ours who's, um, he's out there. He's doing what the Lord wants him to do. He's doing it. He's doing what the Lord wants him to do. There are many of you, brethren, and sisters out there who are doing the things that the Lord wants you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. But remember, that, that, that Titanic's going down, man. We need all hands on deck. We really do. We really do. And like I said, it's just, just a thing of fascination. Just a thing of fascination to me. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, let's, let's, let's address this while it's in the air. Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the, it is the gift of God. Not of works, the works of the law. Ouch. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus on two good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And then we'll be done. It's going to be a short one this day. Ah. Uh, hmm. Verses 57 on to verse 58. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. You know, and if these devils are showing that kind of zeal for Satan, where are we? Like I said, there, there are, praise the Lord, there are saints out there who are doing what the Lord will have them to do. And praise the Lord. Praise our God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, John. <laughs> it's alleluia, not hallelujah. Okay, dear friend. Okay, and I mean that. You watch. I know you do. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. But that's going to be it for this little video. Just something very quick. Um, just wanted to share this with you. Share this with you. Uh, about the vows. And just a, a little thing of fascination for myself. About how the enemy will for sure pay their vows and show such a diligence unto their God, Satan. But with some of us, even saints, we get this kind of lackadaisical approach sometimes, and it's, it ought not to be there. So, that's going to be it for this little video. See you in the next one.